I am. Uh, sweetie. You call me sweetie? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, welcome back to our stupid reaction units. I'm Corbin. I'm Nick. Nick follows on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Juice Content, Facebook, Sam Patreon, Twitter account, ring the bell, and guess what? Bye! Oh. Cut down, go boom. And uh, today we're doing a movie review. A film that came out this year! What? It's a 2021 Tamil film, uh, Kana, uh, not, not Canada, Tamil film, Karnan. I almost said Kana, <laughs> Tamil film, Canada. Um, uh, Kar- not to be confused with Karnan the Barbarian. That's true. Do you like that one? Karnan? Karnan the Barbarian? Conan, it's Conan, right? It was Conan. Conan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like Conan the Barbarian. You like that other one? Uh, what was it? Um, Death to Ming? What was that one? Uh, Death to Me? Ming. Uh, it's He's like... The road Flash! Oh. oh, Flash! Yeah, ah! wow! It was, let him save every one of us! Yeah, anyways, random. Sorry, sorry. Stuff pops into my head. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it came out in uh, 2021. It actually came out in theaters in India, obviously, before all the lockdown stuff happened. Yeah, the and second then wave. It dropped on... Uh, on Amazon, I believe, a week ago. Uh, and so, this is a new uh, Tamil film starring Danush. Danush. Uh, s- directed and written by... <clears throat> uh, Mari Salvaraj. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that. And obviously starring Danush, Lal. Uh, there's a couple of... Rajisha Vijayan, uh, Yogi Babu. Uh, and then these two, I think. Yeah, Guri Kishan and Lakshmi Priya. And there's a lot, of people, Modi. a lot of people in this film. Um, so obviously we can't say them all, but, um, so if you haven't watched it, go watch it, come back if you don't like to be spoiled. Uh, it came out a while ago, so I think I'm, we're fine just doing the spoiler review right now. Yep. Um, but, Rick, your initial thoughts, please. Uh, my, ultimately, I, sorry for Danush fans, I didn't like it ultimately. Mm-hmm. Visually. Mm-hmm. The cinematography, especially at the outset of the film. Yeah, for sure. And then several spots throughout, stunning. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, by far, the best thing about this is if you just want to watch some gorgeous cinematography, and if you have a lifetime of understanding the symbolism and mythology and the metaphors that are a part of the story that come from, and I always butcher the name of the Sanskrit text, this the longest poem in the world, the Mahabharata. I, I always run it. Yeah. If you have a if you have a framework for that, I bet you will like this ten times more than someone who doesn't. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I, I, it, it is for me. And I'll talk more about this. It falls victim, if I can use that word, I guess, to the same uh, problems that uh, the Christian film industry has, mm. in that the Christian film industry will incorporate things from the Bible. And because they've incorporated things from the Bible, the people in the industry consider it to be meritorious Mm. when there's other aspects of it artistically that fall short. Mm. And they don't hear you when you say, but guys, can't you do what Mel Gibson does? Because he doesn't miss the artistic aspects of this and still does the stuff that you are holding up as meritorious. And they, the basic, the basic thing I think happened with this for me is the, it's not just lost in translation. It's the accentuation of that and the mythology and the metaphor and the symbolism when some of the other aspects artistically for me fell short. Yeah. Yeah. Overall, I did enjoy it. I do have problems with it, probably similar problems that you had with it. Um, that, uh, artistically, uh, I did have some issues, but overall I actually really enjoyed it, especially obviously the cinematography and the editing was absolutely gorgeous. gorgeous. Uh, I think, uh, I actually enjoyed most of the acting. I think one of the problems with some of the acting is more of the fact that it was non, it was sync sound mm-hmm. as opposed to, um, the, what is it called? Um, oh. I don't know what the technical term for it is. I know, me too. I'm losing my brain right now. Uh, was it, is it, um, ah, what is it? Ah, sorry, Kim. When they actually take the audio from on set, yeah. uh, which is obviously very common for here. I I don't like ripping films too much because I know there's entire industries in South and that's just how they do it. Right. And I can't just rip every single film for it. Right. I think but that was that was probably some of the issues I had with some of the acting is because 
it's just so jarring sometimes when you can see their mouth and it's moving and it's a different emotional tone mm -hmm. than what they gave. Yeah, there, is, were other, there were other sound things as well. And more than that, the sound issue I had was uh, by the time we reached the big battle sequence, yeah. all of the striking sounds, no matter how far away they were from camera, no matter if it was a stick or a hand, the striking sounds were uniform. They were the same sound level and they were the same sound itself. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but overall, I actually did enjoy it, and I, I did really, and yeah, I, I did he see some of those things that he saw at the end. I did enjoy the last bit part, especially of the fight scene. It was this was a very like mythological style. It wasn't like obviously more realism in terms of the no, the, it the story of it. Even though it wasn't as visually carrying of this theme, it seemed to be like reminiscent in the same way of like Bahu Bali yeah. is. Nice. Uh, yeah, so in, I did I notice Danush actually had, I think, a uh, Raj, um, um, uh, Rajnikanth shirt on, actually. At oh, one I point. missed that. Uh, and I actually think it was Tharabhati. Uh, <laughs> well, then that would have been very, that would have been, because we understand that there's parallels, and it's interesting uh, that we just saw that in the yeah. midst of this, because it's, it's the same story. Same similar story. Yeah. Um, but I did enjoy that, obviously, and it was like That's a, great. It was a mythological that. style of a, a story, where obviously he's the hero, there's a ton of symbolism, some obviously more obvious than others, sure. some obviously we there was no way we'd be able to get, right. uh, being not in that culture. Right. Um, but... There, I, I did enjoy a lot of that. Uh, I thought a lot of the actual fight was pretty good. Obviously, there was some stunt work that was a little cheesy, mm -hmm. obviously, at times. but And also, this did remind me sometimes of a, almost a Western, sometimes, a little bit. Even yeah, the I music behind it sometimes which reminded me of a which Western. Which music was really good. Obviously, musical numbers and with Danush stuff we were always going to be great. But yeah. I thought the overall the overall score was excellent. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so I, I could see a lot of that. Let's talk about the acting. I thought Danush actually did quite well. It was very similar to his other role that we've seen mm -hmm. uh, in Vada Chennai. Yeah. And so I would love to see uh, something even more different from him. Yeah, I get uh, the I get the feeling watching him that there's a that there's that this kind of a film doesn't really give him uh, the kind of thing that would expand what he can do yeah. thespianatically to coin the phrase. You can tell he's a really talented yeah. actor. You can tell he can and act. I I'm singing. I actually enjoyed him both in this and in Vada Chennai. I just I know when like there's a role out there where like he could have sunk his teeth into mm -hmm. and he could be like Fafa level at times. I, I can tell he has that level of talent. In him, it's just obviously he, these two roles were just very similar to me. Yeah. Uh, uh, of those two, but obviously he's a, a laundry list of roles that we've yet, yeah, to, see. yet to see. So I'd those like to see brand more new to him. I would like to see more from that. I mm -hmm. think the main message of this, uh, the film overall, oh, well, there was a ton of messages actually. Yeah. But um, the fact that it was a it was a small uh, village who was being obviously oppressed by the neighboring villages by the police by the overall system, system. and they've basically overcome that uh and they had to fight for it essentially right. Right. almost like a braveheart uh, or what, just a thousand stories like that where somebody who the little guy the little bullied. guy is is overcoming yeah all the obstacles and obviously this village is a incredibly passionate tight-knit mm -hmm. village mm -hmm. they have their problems with each other but they're all very communal and uh they they um, will support each other yeah if anything from the outside does happen yeah uh and so i i did enjoy a lot of that some of the there were some moments that were it happens in a lot of films that we've seen in, in indian cinema it's just some of the over top over the topness mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. does creep in there and it does jar you a little bit uh, it's at least for us, yeah. not for you guys, obviously. I know a lot of people really love this film, and, and when we say stuff like that, you don't see it. But that's obviously where we're coming from. That's kind of what we saw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Not that, not that I actually thought, for the most part, everybody was pretty subdued, uh, the, ex except when you see some of the dubbing. Uh, yeah, that, that was I think some of the main issues. Yeah, there wasn't like, anything. They're, they're I, very subtle, and then you hear like this big loud noise. I'm like, I know that's not coming from his mouth right now. Yeah, I didn't find there to be. While I didn't see anything um, uh, brilliantly mm -hmm. magnificent in the acting yeah. stuff, I didn't see anything glaringly horrifying. Mm -hmm. at, where there's times where you're just watching it and you're like, okay, please just move on. I, yeah. it was I never experienced any of that. For sure. I say the larger thing, the, the two largest things for me that made it a challenge for me 
to become more engrossed and love the film. They both fall into that same category with, and I don't know how many of you have this frame of reference, but here in, in the States, there's the Christian film industry. And they've made films over the years. Uh, Kirk Cameron's made a lot of films over the years there. And the majority of them, nine out of 10, uh, they fall very short artistically, but they're applauded and heralded by the people within that industry and the Christian community. And that's very similar, reminiscent to me, of where you get an industry... I don't get that vibe, because I have a really bad uh, um, view of that industry. And that did not touch this. This was not fireproof by any stretch. No, no, no. But it was, <laughs> it was in this regard. It was in the fact that I think a lot of the applause for the film can be about the representation of the mythology and the metaphors mm. and the connection from that ancient text mm. and how it's being depicted on screen and that that in and of itself is enough to make it meritorious. And mm. that's what happens a lot with a film like Fireproof mm. or a film like God's Generals or uh, any number of films that have come out of the, the Christian film industry where I'll be talking to other people who are Christians and they're like, did you see? Mm. And you're, you see it and you're like, mm. It was average and like, no, it was so, and the reason they're so, they feel so good about it is because it's actually just presenting the texts and the moral compass that they want presented, but mm. it's lacking in some of the artistry. And no matter what you say, they're like, the, the response isn't, oh, you're right. The artistry is lacking. The response mm. that you get is you just, you just didn't get it. You didn't mm. appreciate it. Does that, gotcha. that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I don't know if I agree, just because uh, maybe I just have a very different view of the Christian film industry. This was nowhere near that style, but I think I understand what you're saying, the messaging part of it. But I don't, I just, I don't know if I would say that about this film. Sure. Um, but uh, my, like we said, my favorite part is probably, I mean, the cinematography in this. Unbelievable. Was, uh, it's my, I mean, at the end of the year review, this might be in the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Because this, some of the cinematography and editing of this film was so beautiful and brilliant, almost like Jala Taku at times, the, because some of the night shots were insane. The opening of the film, I thought, if this is just a taste of what this film's gonna be, I am astonished. Yeah. Because it was, it was a work of, there were moments in this where you're just appreciating the cinematography because this is fine artistry. Mm. Yeah. Just absolutely breathtakingly stunning mm. cinematography. Yeah, it was. I, there was so many shots, especially when they with the little uh, his his sister uh, who, who died yeah. obviously from the beginning. Yeah, uh, and then she kept coming back with the mask, which I believe I figured out was in some cultures. I believe in Tamil Nadu. Uh, you guys can tell me if this is wrong, but uh, when a woman or child dies really young, they almost become godlike. Mm. And so that was basically what it was. Okay. She became almost godlike, and that was the, the god mask that she had Got on. It. And so th that's why you kept seeing that symbolism. I believe that's what I read. So you guys can tell me if that's correct or not. But some of those shots when she came in, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> they were stunning. Yeah. Uh, some of the, especially some of the night shots that they had in this thing were insane. I just looked at them like this is, this and, is beautiful. And there, there were some things that we picked up on that. Um, you may think we missed, but we got in symbolism like the kite slash bird aspect sequence when the bird comes and steals and is, is yeah, yeah. takes the stuff of the tree, mm -hmm. as well as the police officer with his head off and the headless statues, yes, yeah. what that meant, the sequence and structure of the film, how, it's, how it, it runs and becomes that big battle. Yeah. Did some research because I wanted to see what is it I'm missing and want to, you know, could pick up on and better understand. Uh, even something, uh, I understand this symbolism, but when it occurred, for me it seemed not spoon-fed, but just so obvious that it just didn't make an impact for me, like the untying of the donkey feet. Yeah, that one was the most obvious one. For yeah, sure. the most obvious. obvious. And then yeah. the larger thing for the storytelling aspect, it missed on two levels for me mm. to connect me with the, the overall story. Not that there's anything wrong with the story, because the story, I think, is a, a very interesting story. Yeah. And I think they do a very good job not knowing the original Sanskrit text by any stretch of the imagination. It seems that this is a, a very good adaptation of that. Yeah. But the two aspects of storytelling that missed for me were the first one was a great storytelling has a sense of being universal. And I felt like I was an outsider watching this thing take place. Mm -hmm. Again, the contemporary Christian film industry, where it's like the only ones we're going to like are the Christians. Mm -hmm. And then the other aspect was I didn't get an empathetic connection. I didn't get a human condition aspect where 
because you don't always have to relate to the circumstance mm -hmm. to connect to the characters and what they believe, what yeah. they're feeling, what they want. Mm -hmm. uh, what I got, which happens a lot in some of the, the films that we see, uh, I got a lot of anger and then mm -hmm. violence gets their anger out and gets the result of what they wanted. Yeah. I didn't care very much about anybody mm. in the end. Yeah. I appreciated the metaphor and the symbolism, but when we're getting to the peak of the climax of everything and, and what happens to grandpa, I would imagine you'd want me caring. Yeah. And for, for I just, I, I didn't empathize. Yeah. With I think they, at least I thought they wanted you to probably care more for the community as a whole. Sure. Cause obviously they, they, even though they were going through all this stuff, they still very much wanted their village to be looked at well. That's why they wanted all their girls sure. to go to school. Yeah. And all the kind and actually I think the the ending probably could have been cut where they I'd never like those endings where they go ten years ever. Right. Um I I think it would have been a much stronger ending if they would have just cut right where they originally before the Ten years later, right? I should, my personally, I hate that. I was saying, I, I, I can probably assume what's going to happen in ten years. I don't think you need to tell me. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I, I never like those style of endings. Um, but obviously, they, I think they probably wanted you to care more about just the the whole community. But yeah, I, I got that. I think the, the the love interest, even though I thought they had good chemistry, was she a little, was very good. Was a little underdeveloped. Yeah, uh, I would have liked to have seen more of that. And obviously, I think the the more of the story was about the community as opposed to them uh, in their relationship. But I thought mm -hmm. she did really well, and I thought they had good chemistry. Her and Danush. Mm -hmm. The songs were awesome. Uh, we had seen a one. I don't know if it ever made it to the channel, but it, maybe it was on Patreon. But the one. I think it was a funeral Danush yeah. was singing. Yeah. It was a promotional piece, yeah. which was phenomenal. Uh, really enjoyed that because he, once again, he has so much energy about him. Uh, I think he's he's such, I think he's one, a talented actor, but all he, has, he brings a good amount of energy to all of his roles. Mm -hmm. uh, so I liked the score over all of this. Uh, and so, and I think it probably could have been shorter as well. I think the sweet spot for this would have been Two hours to two fifteen mm. is probably where I would have probably preferred it, as yeah. opposed to two. I think it was two forty, which I, I would imagine a lot of people would think two forty is a pretty trim runtime when you <laughs> consider the text that this comes from yeah, and how long this actually is. Yeah, <laughs> but I thought for but the most yeah. part the pacing did did do pretty well. Uh, I don't. Maybe you guys can tell us why they do do sync sound as opposed to. Uh, in time sound, like having a sound person live, on like set. Like live sound. Maybe you guys can tell us why some industries decide to just not do that. I don't know. Uh, but that that's always a struggle. I know it's for both of us. It, mm -hmm. It's always a struggle when you when you see that because it, it, I can tell that that's not the real voice. So it takes it, me out of a lot of it. It, it interferes with suspension of disbelief. So you guys yeah. can tell me why that why they do that sometimes. I'm not going to blame this film specifically for it because we've seen it in a lot. A lot of films, no. Yeah, and I just, I don't, I don't know why they do it. Is it cost? Is it, is it just it people be, don't care? I can think I of three know. things. I can think of the fact that it's because this is the way it's been done predominantly for so long. Mm. So they're used to it. Yeah. And it's hard to change something that you're used to. Yeah. Secondarily, it is a time saver, which is number three, a money saver. Yeah. When you don't have to do retakes because of sound, or then you have to do ADR work after the fact, you just do everything post, and when you're on set, it's gonna save you a lot of time to not have to deal with that, which in turn will save you money. Yeah, Especially yeah. when you wanna make films and just pump them out, if you're making a lot of films in an industry. I guess. I guess. I guess. For, for me, it, it minimizes the artistry. Yeah, I, I, I would always prefer because the actor's in a different place in a studio than he is yeah. on set. Yeah. And so I can tell in the voice the difference in his emotion than when he was on set. Mm -hmm. And which is unfortunate because what he looked on camera was really nice and I actually probably would have preferred that over the oh, audio yeah. I got. Of course. Because <laughs> it's like what he was feeling. He was in the moment. Yes. So that's that, just a little of where we're coming from when we talk about that. It's just... That's that was probably my my biggest end, but I hate griping on it just now because I know. it's it's so prevalent. It's just I can't just gripe on it in every film. It's I just I, I would like to understand why it happens. But overall, I did enjoy the film. Uh, I would like to see more Danush uh, as well as uh, the the main lead as well. Oh, you know who else I did enjoy a lot? We didn't talk about him. Uh, Yogi uh, Yogi Babu. Yeah, Yogi I, Babu. Uh, I enjoyed him a lot. Uh, I think he normally plays comedy roles. Oh, really? I believe so. You I guys don't know. can tell me if I'm wrong. I actually liked him a lot, and uh, his love interest is not Yogi's, but Danush's uh, love yeah, interest. Yeah, she was, she was I, very I good. liked her a lot. So let us know the next Danush film 
Give us one that he, he really, it's a it's like a really great, different character. You know our style. Yeah. So, uh, let, I think things. Yeah. Let us know uh, what the next Danush film we should watch is down below. Look <laughs> <laughs>